Now Windows 10 is rapidly approaching its end of support date. That happens on October 14, 2025, just three months from now. Despite that, Microsoft seems determined to ensure that only newer computers are able to upgrade to the latest operating system. And it really kind of baffles me because I read recently that in a report that there's estimated to be 250 to 400 million older PCs that won't be able to do the upgrade. And the fear is that those PCs, because they're going to be cut off of support for the only operating system that applies to them, are going to end up in landfill or as e-waste. Uh, that doesn't really seem like great planning on Microsoft's part to me. So if you've got an older PC like this old Dell that's got a Intel Core i5-6500, it doesn't qualify to be upgraded to Windows 11. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to keep this PC running after October 14? And maybe even more importantly, why is Microsoft doing this? It seems insane. Well, we're going to dive right into that right now here on Tech Talk. So a great question is, why is it that Microsoft isn't allowing Windows 11 to be rolled out on older computers that people are still using? Well, according to Microsoft, the key thing is Trusted Platform Module 2.0. Now, this is a newer device that's come out on more recent computers. And Windows says it's critical for maintaining uh, computer security and software security. And it's true, TPM, that Trusted Platform Module, it does play a big role in modern security and encryption tools. It basically ensures that all the components in your computer are trusted and verified. So that's the official Microsoft reasoning. I guess I can kind of buy it, I understand it. But if I was more of a conspiracy theory kind of guy, and I'm not, but I'm also kind of realistic about the way the world works, I know that Microsoft works really, really closely with hardware manufacturers and vendors. And what I think part of the problem is, is that computers have just gotten too powerful. You see, if you go back in the day, say 20 years ago, if you were an average home user or office user, and by average I mean you weren't gaming, you weren't doing content creation, you were using PCs for more average tasks, accounting software, office software, maybe editing photos, surfing the web, getting your email, those kinds of things. If you were that kind of user, you still had to upgrade your computer every couple of years because that software would use more and more computer resources, the newest versions of Windows would use more computer resources, and then your computer would slow down, and so after three or four years, you're pretty much forced to buy a new computer, even if you weren't, you know, a power user that was using all kinds of resources doing, you know, really heavy-duty workloads. But that kind of stopped 10 or 12 years ago because computing power got to the point where all those office programs, those accounting programs, the new versions of Windows, photo editing software, web browsers, computers have gone way past even the most recent versions of that software. Those new versions that come out, they don't really use any computer resources. So if you've got a computer kicking around that's 10 or 12 years old, and particularly if you've put an SSD in that computer, that computer can do all those tasks with all the most recent software, no problem. So when I kind of look at it, and I'm a big believer in, you know, follow the money because that's kind of what makes the world work these days. When I kind of see that, I think a lot of those users, those office users, those home users, they don't really have a great motivation to be upgrading their computers regularly. And so I think a lot of that renewal, a lot of those computer sales have died off. And in fact, when you look at the numbers, computer sales for years and years and years have been getting slower and slower and slower. Now that's partly to blame on the, you know, popularity of mobile devices and laptops and phones and, and tablets and things that we didn't have 20 years ago. But I think it's also partly because people that have more plain Jane generic home and office reasons to have a computer, they just don't need to update that often. And so if I was a bit more of a conspiracy theorist, I would be kind of arguing that Microsoft and the hardware manufacturers and uh, wholesalers have kind of gotten together and said, hey, look, this is a great reason, not only for security purposes, but it's a great reason to push people to buy new computers and get computer sales going again, because desktop sales in particular have been sliding for many, many years. So yeah, I believe Microsoft's reasoning around security reasons, but I also think there's a bit of a profit motive here. And I think it's kind of sad because both Microsoft and Bill Gates, who's of course Microsoft's founder, they're all big environmental guys, right? They're all about, you know, saving the environment and being good to the planet and re reduce, reuse, and recycle. 
And yet here they are basically taking what is estimated to be, I read one estimate of 250 to 400 million computers worldwide currently operating on Windows 10 that are too old to upgrade to Windows 11. So here they're basically pushing all those computers off a cliff and into the, uh, the e-waste recycling business. So I kind of, I don't know, if you think I'm a little critical of this move by Microsoft to, to only allow the Windows update on certain computers that are, that are newer, yeah, I am. I'm a little critical. I think it's a bad thing for the environment. I think it's a bad thing to do to your customers, and I kind of think there's a huge profit motive behind it. But that's just my opinion. I have no proof, so take that for what you will. So after October 14, there's a couple of things that are going to happen to your Windows 10 operating system in your computer that it that resides on. First of all, there's going to be no more free software updates. Uh, no more security fixes, no more feature improvements, no more reliability updates, nothing available through Windows Update. So that's a bit of a problem because especially without those security patches, that leaves your computer kind of vulnerable. Uh, second thing is there's no more free technical assistance. You can't call uh, Win uh, Microsoft and get technical assistance for Windows 10 anymore. That's going to be completely cut off. Again, the security risk just goes up. Your PC is still going to function. Like You'll still be able to use your Windows 10 computer, but it's going to become increasingly vulnerable to new security threats and viruses. Um, so it's really kind of a difficult thing to recommend that you just keep operating it for any length of time after, after October 14. And lastly, there's the potential for performance issues. You might find that your computer is getting slower and slower and slower because it's not receiving updates to keep up to date with current software and, and new advancements in software development. So that's kind of what's going to happen. Basically, act after October 14, if you do nothing, you're going to have some problems with your computer that maybe you don't want to have to deal with. So the next question then becomes, what are my options after October 14? Well, you've really got four of them. Now, you may have an older computer that still qualifies to upgrade to Windows 11 because the specifications aren't all that onerous, really. Now, you do have to have the trusted platform module, too. That's one thing you've got to have. And as for your CPU, you have to have an AMD Ryzen second generation or newer or an Intel Core eighth generation or newer. Now, if you've got a CPU that follows in those ranges, the chances are pretty good that you're going to be able to update to Windows 11. I am going to put a link in the description down below that'll give you all the things that you need to know about what your computer has to have in order to get that upgrade. And it is a free upgrade still. So if your computer meets the specifications, you can upgrade for free. I highly recommend you do it. Now, I know a lot of people have been holding on to Windows 10 because they like it. They're worried about Windows 11. They've heard horror stories. For myself, I've been using it for years on a number of computers. It's worked fine. I've got no problems with it. Yeah, like any new software, there's going to be some adjustments. But the reality of it is Microsoft is really pushing you to make the upgrade. And it's probably a battle you're not going to win. So at this point, you're probably best off just to knuckle down and do it. Because if you want to keep your computer safe and secure and virus free, you're going to pretty much have to do it going forward anyway. Microsoft isn't really going to give you a very good alternative. Now, it's pretty easy to do that upgrade. You do it right within Windows itself. You go into Settings privacy and security to Windows Update, and you see a little banner there that talks about upgrading to Windows 11. The process is straightforward. It pretty much looks after itself. So last time, yep, if your computer qualifies, I recommend you do it. It's really the only course of action now. So the question then is, what if your computer doesn't qualify? What if it's old enough that you can't get that free Windows 11 update because you don't have the hardware for it? Well, your second option for dealing with the end of Windows 10 is called the Extended Security Update Program that Microsoft has instituted. It's the ESU. Now, this program is going to give you critical and security updates for Windows 10 for one year following October 14, 2025. So it'll carry you into the fall of 2026. And what that does, it's for one year, you can continue on with these uh, critical updates and the security updates. It'll keep your Windows 10 computer reasonably safe. Um, so then you don't really have to worry about bad things happening to it, malware, etc. But it's not a freebie. And here's where it gets kind of iffy. There's three different options 
for being part of this extended securities update program. The first is that you can pay for it. The cost is $30 US, and for that $30, like I say, all you get is critical and security updates for a year. And at the end of that year, you're going to have to think of something because Microsoft isn't promising they're going to extend it beyond the one-year mark. Now, there's a second option. If you don't like the paid option paying $30, US, there's an option that Microsoft likes to call free. It's not really free. It's just differently paid. And that is if you use your Microsoft account in OneDrive to back up your PC, you can access the extended securities update program for free. Now, the problem with that, and the only caveat is that the free version of OneDrive only gives you five gigabits of data. Five gigabits is probably not gonna back up anybody's PC. So you're gonna find yourself paying at a very minimum for more OneDrive storage space, which will allow you to back up your computer to OneDrive, which will then give you access to the extended securities update program, but you're still gonna be out of pocket for it. You're gonna to have to pay some money for that service. The third way to be a part of the ESU is to give Microsoft a thousand of your Microsoft reward points. Uh, if you've got Microsoft reward points, this might be the best way to go. I don't know what else you're gonna use them for, uh, but a thousand Microsoft reward points will get you into the ESU for a year and you'll get those uh, critical updates for your Windows 10 computer for that year. Now, it's important to understand that, like I said, it's critical updates only. You're not going to get software updates. You're not going to get new features. You're not going to get technical support. Uh, it's only meant as a bridge to kind of get you by for another 12 months while you figure out what to do with your computer. Uh, and if this applies to you, if you're in Windows 10, your PC doesn't qualify to go to Windows 11, starting this month in July, you're going to be getting prompts. It's an enrollment wizard for the ESU. You're going to be getting prompts to enroll to maintain security updates on your Windows 10 computer. That's gonna happen automatically, so you'll have a chance to enroll right from within your Windows desktop there. So that's your first two options. Upgrade to 11 if your computer will take it. Uh, the second option is to enroll in the extended securities update program. The third option is just to continue using Windows 10 as it is. Don't enroll in anything. Don't give Microsoft any of your hard earned money. Uh, after October 14, your Windows 10 isn't gonna just die, it's not gonna quit. You can still use the computer. The problem is you don't get any security patches, you don't get any updates. Um, for me, that wouldn't really be a huge problem except for the security risks. Uh, it's not really recommended. You're not gonna get any new driver updates, you're not gonna get uh, patches, security updates, defense against malware, all that kind of stuff just stops. So it does leave your computer at risk. Now, I always have a hard time wrapping my head around exactly how much risk you have when it comes to this sort of thing. I mean, if you're a home user, what are the chances your computer is going to get hacked or malware or viruses? But it's the kind of thing you probably don't want to risk it, especially if you've got sensitive information or things like photographs that have sentimental value that you can't replace. It's probably a risk you don't want to take. So yeah, you can continue using your Windows 10, but you're kind of leaving yourself open to problems. And the longer you use it without updates, the more open you leave yourself, the more risk you're taking on. So I don't know that that's really a viable option unless you're really, really brave. Uh, the fourth option you can consider, and this is kind of a neat one, is to ditch Microsoft and Windows altogether and go with Linux. Um, the best points about Linux, if you're not familiar, it's an alternative operating uh, system. It's, it's based on the old Unix uh, program. But Linux is kind of neat because it's open source. That's its first great plus. It's free, which is its second great plus. And the third great plus is it's not Microsoft. If you're kind of in the mood that you're irritated at Microsoft and you really want to stick it to them and you don't want to be a part of their ecosystem anymore, Linux is a great way to go. You can download it installed on your PC for free. It's very lightweight. It runs really, really fast, especially on older computers. It works great. Uh, and what we've seen recently is a whole lot more uptake in Linux than there used to be. At the beginning of 2020, about 1.9%, 1.9% of all desktops around the world use Linux. Uh, at the end of last month, that increased to 4.09%, so it's more than doubled its uptake. Now, 4% of all computers, I get it, that's not huge, and yes, Linux is kind of niche software, but over the years, it's getting better and better and better. And if you're a home user or even a small business user, there's lots of reasons to take up Linux and think about using it. In a future video I'm going to do in a couple of weeks, we're actually going to look at that. We're going to look at how appropriate is it to take up Linux if you're a hardcore Windows user and you don't really want to learn anything new about operating systems. You just want to load up an operating system and use it. Is that practical for Linux? I haven't used Linux in years. I'm kind of eager to see what the latest versions look like and to see uh, you know how they run. So we're going to do that in a couple of weeks. Stay tuned for that video. 
So to wrap this video up, October 14, 2025 is going to be the end of support for Windows. At that point, you'll get no more security patches, no more updates, no more technical support. It's kind of a hard end unless you want to cough up more money to Microsoft or upgrade to Windows 11 because your PC uh, is able to. If you've got an older PC, you're going to have to come up with a, a strategy that you want to pursue. Uh, we're going to take a look at Linux, like I say, in a couple of weeks and see how that looks. But otherwise, either you're going to pay for the ESU or you're going to buy a new computer and, and upgrade to Windows 11. Personally, if you think I'm a little sarcastic on this video towards Microsoft, I am. I think this is a bad idea. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's good for their customers. I don't think it's good for the environment when there's so many older computers that still work really, really well. Uh, but I'd like your thoughts on that. What do you think? Do you think that this is fair on the part of Microsoft? What are you going to do to take your older computer going forward after October to keep it running and to keep it useful for you? I'd love to know. Put those comments down below. Now, next week, we're going to have a different video. It's going to be a lot more serious. It's about a significant problem with artificial intelligence that has come to light recently. It's a huge issue. It's dangerous. It's happening now. Don't miss that one next weekend. But for now, I'm going to sign off for this video. I hope to see you on the next one, and we'll talk again soon. This is Tech Talk, and I'm Graham Hughes.